Tonight, residents of Paradise, California, are still recovering three years after the deadliest fire in California history, which all but wiped their town off the map. The fire creating a group of resilient so-called climate nomads forced to adapt to the new reality of fire season in California. Arcana Whitworth traveled to Paradise, where those who returned home have now gained a new appreciation for what home means. The deadliest and most destructive wildfire in California history, the campfire, all but wiped the town of Paradise off the map. It's bad. Watch out, watch out. Three years later, many of the 27,000 people displaced by the fire are still unable to return. Part of a growing group of so-called climate nomads forced to reckon with nature, upending their lives and destroying their homes. A lot of their friends have left and not come back, which is kind of hard for them, but... Um, it's just, this is where home is. For Jed and Kayla, keeping their three boys near their school was key, but with nearly every building in town destroyed, they had nowhere to go. What were your conversations like with your schoolmates when you're living in your tent? What were you talking to your friends about when you were at school? I didn't really talk to much people when we were living in tents. I kind of just like avoided people as much as possible. You avoided people? Yeah. Why? Uh, because, I mean, we lived in tents. And you didn't like talking about that. Initially, living in various hotels for months, Jed's plumbing tools were destroyed in the fire, their earning potential at an all-time low, and then insurance money running dry. The family resorting to living in the wilderness, just a tent over their heads. During that, that, that fire season, the grades dipped down where there's D's and F's, but I'm proud of them. Before the end of the school year, they pulled them up. And they got A's and B's. They were super proud. Guys. I mean, they're, they're doing homework by lantern light. Braving freezing temperatures and snowstorms. I woke up and I was beating the snow off the tarps and off the tents, and I heard the boys <laughs> muttering something, and I crawled out, and their tent had collapsed on them because of the snow. Christine Hansen had also lived in paradise. Well, I've lived here 25 years. 25 years? Yeah. It's my favorite place in the whole world. She also escaped the flames, as did most of her house. But the damage from the mold and toxins so significant, she can't move back. So you had to have all these windows replaced already? Yes, they all, they melted and my big ones all melted. Delayed by fights with the insurance company and contractors that are overworked, she doesn't know when she'll get home. And you found yourself living with your parents and she I am so lucky. There were 57,000 people all looking for a place to live in three hours. So I was so fortunate that my parents do live in town. From our perspective, as a consumer group, uh, climate change has not been kind to um, our constituency. Amy Bach of United Policyholders says very often it's harder for standing home survivors to reach a claim at all with their insurance company. More um, hurricanes and wildfires that cause their customers to make claims, you know, the more they want to get rid of the customers that are likely to file claims. In 2019, 67,000 people won a class action lawsuit against PG&E, California's largest utility in a multi-billion dollar settlement. But as of September, over 75 percent of claimants are still waiting for a payout. I've heard the answers and, and the excuses and they don't they don't get very far with me anymore. Yeah. I mean, there's it, it's time to settle up and pay the people. Stephen Murray has been in a battle since the fire to rebuild his home, raising his one-year-old daughter in the back of his truck. Come here, baby girl. <laughs> She's oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now he puts his energy into helping others, embarking on a similar battle, taking his family along with him. You're up here. You need anything? Come on up. Everything's free. We drove 100,000 miles, taking survivors all over the United States. You know, and so. That was her first year of life, then COVID hit. I took her to breakfast for the first time this week. Like those who live in Greenville, a town recently destroyed by the Dixie Fire. I want people to know what they're about to go through. Uh, living in a trailer is not that much fun, especially with a family. Along with gas, water, and food, he has delivered 125 propane tanks to residents in Greenville, and he has plans for more. There wasn't an option to leave. There was, but it wasn't my, it wasn't my cards to leave. Home never changes for some. They return, they rebuild, but others are forced to start over somewhere else. And according to researchers at Chico State, 
They say many are limited by income and the amount of available affordable housing. It doesn't exist in a lot of places in California, and I think that's why you're seeing a lot of exodus um, from the state overall. These researchers have been documenting where people displaced from the campfire have gone. Did people who were forced to leave from the Paradise Fire end up in all 50 states? Yes, actually, yeah. just check that this morning that there's, there's survivors in, in every state. They say their research demonstrates the range of outcomes that climate refugees can experience. For people who are looking for affordable housing, it's almost hard to escape moving to yep. one of those kinds of areas. Very little of California, if you look at a, a, the entire state, is completely free and clear of fire risk. After losing nearly everything they owned, Jed and Kayla finally found a place to rent near the old home as another record-breaking fire season threatens the West Coast. Was there ever a thought in your mind that maybe you don't come back here? They were raised most of their life in paradise, so they felt the connection. So it was like we wanted to move, but it wasn't really about me or him. It was about that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.